Hi, and welcome to Smoke Training. In part five of the Connect Effects series, we'll go about building a simple node composite. We'll look at constructing a simple vignette effect, use a window layout suited to effects work, and show you a method of displaying a node's result in the schematic. In this episode of our Introduction to Connect Effects series, we'll walk through building a simple node composite from the start. Here on our timeline, we have added a simple vignette effect to our shots. As with any editing and effects system, there are many ways to achieve a desired end result. Let's go about recreating this effect using Connect Effects. Let's start by taking a single shot into Connect Effects that has no previous effects attached. Select the shot and press Control Tab to bring up the effect type chooser pop up. Select Create Connect Effects. So, what are some of the elements that make up a vignette effect? Darkened around the outside of the image, maybe some blurring of the image, or maybe the colours change to enhance the edge. As with any effect or treatment, everyone has a different idea about what they perceive the end result to look like. So feel free to use your own artistic license as we go along. In a layer-based compositor, you would probably use two separate layers, one containing the darkened source clip for the outside of the image, and the other being the untreated centre part of the image. In Smoke, you can use the one source clip multiple times, treating each one differently to simulate what separate layers would achieve in other systems. To show you what I mean, let's drag a couple of effect nodes into the workspace. From the effect node bin, drag in two colour corrector nodes. We'll use one to create a darkened version of the clip which will eventually only affect the outer edges of the frame, and the second colour corrector will be used to apply just a general grade to the image. Now drag a connection line from the source clip to the red input of the first colour corrector. Double click the node and adjust the parameters to make the clip darker and less saturated. Now draw a second connection line from the source clip to the second colour corrector. Use this colour corrector node to apply just a simple grade that enhances the colours. By clicking on each node in turn you'll see we now have two different variations of the same clip. This shows the power of nodes as opposed to needing multiple layers in other systems to achieve the same thing. You can create as many different outputs from a source clip as you require. What we need to do now is apply a mask so that the darkened colour effect only appears around the outside of the frame. Go to the FX node bin and locate the G mask node. We need to create an oval mask shape to limit where the colour effect occurs. Place the node in the connect effect schematic. Notice the red light on the G mask node. This node requires an input for it to work correctly. Drag a connection line from your source clip and connect it to the G mask red input tab. This gives the mask the required input but at the same time enables you to view your source clip as you draw your mask. To start drawing the mask, from the Connect Effects Tools menu, select the Draw Shape option. You can also use the keyboard shortcut Shift-C to enable the mask drawing tool. Click down and start plotting the points required to draw an elliptical shape. As you click down, drag away from the point to help create a more natural curve. Finally, click down on the point you created first to complete the shape. Now, in the result view, we can see the mask that we've created. Let's add some softness to the mask, which we'll use to help blend the two clips together. By adjusting the offset field to a negative number, it will soften the mask outwards. You can adjust the overall mask size here by adjusting the scale value. What we really need now is another way of viewing our composite. We really need to see how our overall result is looking while still working on individual nodes. The 3 up viewport display is a handy view to be working in when building a composite. Press the keyboard shortcut Option 3 to activate it. This gives you three viewports horizontally. Press it again to have it split the screen so that the connect effect schematic is placed at the top with two viewports placed beneath it. What we can do now with this view is display the output of the current selected node in the left hand side and show the final connect effects result on the right. Click in the bottom left viewport to make it active. By pressing F4, this viewport will then display the result of the current node. So every time we choose a new node, the result of that node will be displayed here in the lower left hand view. Now select the right viewport. Here we want to display the final result of the whole Connect Effects composite. From the View menu, choose Connect Effects Result, or you can simply use the keyboard shortcut 0. 
Nothing appears in the viewport as we do not have anything connected presently to the ConnectFX output node. What we need to do now is combine the different versions of our clip using the mask we created. To easily combine layers inside of ConnectFX, use the Blend and Comp node. This node allows us to combine two separate images and alpha channels over a background. Let's connect the first Color Corrector node, the darkened version, into the front input and connect the other Color Corrector node into the background. Make sure the output of the Blend and Comp node is connected into the final ConnectFX output. If you imagine for a moment how a layer-based compositor would work, what we have here is a darkened layer placed over the top of the same source footage. Now we need to use the mask we created to effectively cut a hole in the top layer to expose the layer beneath. Connect the output of the mask node into the blue matte input connector which is beneath the first red input of the blend and comp node. Now while working on an individual node we can see its properties and adjust it while viewing the final result here in the right hand viewport. This is ideal when you first start out building composites inside of ConnectFX as you can see what effect any actions you perform on a node has on the overall end result. Obviously we want the mask around the other way so that we see the darkened area on the outside. Double click on the mask node. Now to easily invert the mask, activate the outside button. Now when we adjust the softness of the mask we can see the change on the mask and the actual result at the same time. Let's use the power of nodes to help enhance the effect now. Notice how the edge of the vignette effect is not as smooth or as natural as it could be. Let's drop in a blur node after the mask. This will enable us to soften the mask even further. Now adjust the blur values and you can see the effect it has on the final result. The transition between the darkened area and the middle of the picture is so much more smooth and natural. When you start out building composites and connect effects, Smoke has a useful display of showing you a small preview of any of the connected nodes. By double clicking on the yellow output connection of a node, Smoke will display a useful thumbnail that shows the result of that node. This is a very useful visual reference to use when starting out in ConnectFX. At a quick glance you can see what the visual result is of any node you choose. Simply double click the yellow output connection of the node to hide the thumbnail again. Now we can exit ConnectFX and render and view the final result on the timeline. That brings to a close part 5 of this series introducing Smoke 2013's visual effects compositing environment, ConnectFX. Thank you for watching. In our next episode, we'll take a quick look at how Smoke converts existing timeline effects and turns them into a ConnectFX composite. Ah! <laughs>